In 1862, when Abraham Lincoln signed the legislation creating the Transcontinental Railroad, he set in motion a series of events which would forever change our country. Those rails were joined here in Utah, not far from Ogden, in Promontory Summit. That event was culminated with the driving of the Golden Spike. The Spike was a state-of-the-art project. It was done with the craftsmanship of the time. It's an elegant, beautiful piece. And we think it's wonderful to remember the past. But today we're here at Parker Aerospace in Ogden to look ahead to the future, to use a new state-of-the-art technology called additive metal manufacturing. And we're gonna use that technology to make a new symbol, a symbol for the future that we're starting right here in Utah. Here in Ogden, we design, develop, manufacture, and support flight control actuation for commercial aircraft. We're really on the leading edge of designing and developing high-performance flight control systems for the business. And one of those is through additive manufacturing. If we can take today what is 30 components, a manifold, a piston, a cylinder, and rather than traditionally machine it, we can print it. You only have to print metal where you need it. This part was produced conventionally from aluminum and it was machined conventionally. This was 3D printed. It was about a 30% weight saving to design this for additive. And if I were to develop a new part like this and I came up with a, an electronic model and I tried to develop inside this facility or at a supply chain, it would take roughly a year to get a part in my hand. With today's technology and what we're doing here, if we've got that model, we can literally print this same part in a week. The technology that we're using, the basis of it is a computer model. In 3D scanning, you're using an actual laser to map the outside surface of a part, which will then be moved into a engineering model to create a digital file that can be 3D printed. In our case, with the electron beam technology, the printer is spreading a layer of powder in our case, it's titanium. And then the electron beam comes in and melts the powder and it welds the powder layer by layer on top of each other into the geometry that you want. Once it's cooled down, essentially you will remove the part, which is gonna be surrounded by what we call a cake. It is moved over to another piece of equipment called a powder recovery system and you remove the cake or that extra titanium from around the printed parts. After you're done cleaning all the loose powder off, there's a separate operation which can be fairly manual. We have support material that we design into the part to support the geometry while it's being printed and that needs to be removed. We feel very fortunate to be able to be involved in the Spike 150 project. We've been able to design and print our own spikes. This is actual titanium. We're proud of things like this. It ties us to the past, but it's the future. Back in the day, this joining of a railroad across the country was an innovation. We think we're doing the same thing in a different way innovating new technology to be part of something bigger, to be able to say, hey, we've contributed to the next generation of flight is pretty neat thing to say.